Hello there. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to snipe like a pro in Destiny. Have you ever gone into a PvP match and you come up against a crack sniper? A sniper that does not miss. You can be jumping, you can be sliding, they can snipe you out of the air. You know, you just don't feel safe anywhere on the map. Uh, yeah, so if you've been in that position, you know what it's like when you come up against an ace sniper and just how effective sniping can be in Destiny. And it inspires you to grab a sniper yourself, but you grab a sniper and you can't hit anything. Like you're going to PvP, you cannot hit a thing. You think, how do they do it? It seems magic. Like there is a dark art to sniping and I'm gonna teach you in this video the secret sauce, the dark art of sniping like a pro. Okay, so, you know, you might grab a sniper and you sit at the back of the map Camping, that's what they call it. You stay static, you're sitting there, you're hard scoping, so you know you aim down sights and stay aimed down sights, and you sort of lock down maybe a choke point on the map, which is a high footfall point on the map. It's a constricted point like a doorway or an alleyway. So you sit there, hard scoping, hoping that someone's going to appear in your sights, and then you move the crosshairs or the dot on your scope onto their head and pull the trigger. But of course, that doesn't work a lot of the time because they're moving. So yeah, it just seems impossible. Now, if you know the map really well, you maybe know that the head height of a guardian at a certain point, and you know, if you look at the textures here, you can think, okay, so if I keep my sights on this texture point here, this little feature, when someone comes around the corner, I'll be about head height. Hopefully they'll walk through my sights. I just pull the trigger. That's not sniping like an ace. You're never going to get good at sniping if you're just camping at the back of the map, hard scoped, hoping to get lucky and someone will wander into your sights. You need to actually be mobile. You need to keep up with your teammates, do flanking maneuvers, you know, pincer enemies. You want to support your teammates. Sitting at the back of the map, camping, you're not really helping your teammates. People don't want to play with you if you're just going to camp and snipe. And it's no fun. It's literally no fun sniping like that. So you want to actually still be mobile with a sniper. The key to that is using your primary weapon. Don't just feel like to be a crack sniper, you just have to sit there with a sniper. Spend all your time sniping. You really still want to make good use of your primary weapon and you snipe when it's appropriate. Okay, so if you want to snipe more aggressively and actually be more mobile as a sniper, then you need a sniper that has, in my opinion, a snapshot on it. Now snipers with a snapshot allow you to aim down sights quickly. And a good sniper knows that when they're moving around, they're gonna be opportunities that present themselves for a snipe and you need to aim down sights quickly. Yes, you can fire a sniper from the hip and people do do that close up and you can get body shots and do a lot of damage, especially if it's a high impact sniper. But most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to aim down sights. So snapshot will allow you to do that quicker. I would say that's probably the best feature to have on a sniper is snapshot. Because you want to be up in people's faces with your sniper and do quick scopes, quickly scope in and take your shot. And that's the thing about being an ace sniper, it's about taking your shot. Get out of cover, take your shot and get back into cover. You're going to get flinched with a sniper. If you try and trade, stand and trade with a sniper, you're not going to win. Well, unless you hit that first shot. If you miss your shot, then get back into cover. Um, you need to reload and reposition. Okay, if you get flinched, sometimes you can get lucky and still get the shot. But really, with a sniper, it's about taking your shot and getting out of there. But of course, how do you land your shot? How do you consistently land your shots? You know, what's the secret sauce? What's the magic to it? Well, the secret sauce is exploiting what's called aim assist. All these crack snipers, that's what they're doing. They are exploiting a feature in the game. It's in all PvP games, really, all shooting games. They have some sort of aim assist, or in Destiny it's called target acquisition. But it's basically the same thing. It's a mechanism within the game that helps you to land your shots. And crack snipers know how this mechanism works, and they exploit it. Okay, so how does this mechanism work? Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but when you're playing in PvP, you may have a hand cannon, so you go for a body shot, you get flinched, and your sights shoot up in the air. And instead of getting the body shot, 
you get a headshot. Pull the trigger thinking you're going to get a body shot. You get flinched, your sight moves up in the air, and you magically get that headshot. And this is a clue to how people realise how to exploit aim assist. Why wait to get flinched? Why not just move your sight through the hitbox of the head of your opponent, yourself, and just pull the trigger at the right time? Now that might sound a bit airy fairy, but what's the right time to pull the trigger? Well, that comes with practice, but you need to know what you're trying to achieve. And then you can practice. And there is a lot of muscle memory to sniping. Practice is a big part of it. But okay, so how do you exploit aim assist? Think of aim assist as a cone that's coming out the end of your sniper. Imagine you've got a torch attached to the end of the sniper and that cone has a certain diameter to it and a certain length. Now any hitbox, any enemy that strays into that cone will create a sort of magnetic effect. You might have heard other people talking about stickiness with weapons, you know, how sticky it is. What they're referring to is how good the aim assist is. So if there's a good aim assist on the weapon, it will be more sticky. Think of that cone of light coming out. It's not light, obviously, but think of it as a torch on the end. So it's like a cone coming out of light. Anything that gets illuminated by that light is going to trigger that sort of magnetic, sticky effect. Some people call it snappiness. They're referring to the fact that it's easy to snap to a target. You know, so as soon as something enters that cone, it's going to activate that sort of magnetic effect. It depends how fast you're moving the site. If you're moving the site really quickly, then the magnetic effect is going to be less. So the slower than you're moving the site, the more that magnetic effect is going to kick in. Okay, and the stronger it's going to be. Now you seem to have to move the scope to get the magnetic effect to activate. If you don't move the scope, it doesn't seem to activate. But once it is activated, it does seem to drag the scope. Now, unfortunately, we do not have access to the source code. Only Bungie know exactly how the aim assist works, the different components, the aim assist, how they work together. So we can only do little tests like this, little experiments to try and establish how it behaves. But utilizing the magnetic effect of aim assist is key to sniping. So some people say, oh yeah, you need to have really high aim assist sniper to it's be a good sniper no nothing. high aim assist snipers will help you to learn how to snipe like a pro but a pro can snipe with literally any sniper because any sniper has aim assist even a, a low aim assist sniper in the hands of a crack sniper they're still going to be able to utilize and exploit that but while you're learning definitely pick a sniper with high aim assist there are websites that actually show the figures for the different weapons and look for that target acquisition to start with. And once you get the technique down, once you get that muscle memory and that timing, then you can use other snipers with low aim assist and you'll still be effective. Also handling is really important because if you want to snipe like a pro, as I said, you want to be running with your teammates, supporting them, and therefore you're going to be closer to enemies. So you need to be able to track them with your sniper quickly Good handling on the sniper will allow you to move the scope quicker and more accurately and more freely and track your enemies better. Okay, so I mentioned earlier about being flinched and getting a headshot. So what's happening there? Well, when you get flinched, the sight is moving up through the headbox of the enemy. And that's the key thing. It's moving through the headbox. Don't try and position the sight on the hitbox. Just move the sight in a controlled way through the hitbox. So the line of motion of the movement of the scope must intersect with the line of motion of the actual hitbox. Now, at the right time, when you feel as if the timing is right, press the trigger. And that's all fraction of a second stuff. And there is a dark art to that. Like, well, when do I pull the trigger? And some people will say, oh, you've got to wait for that stickiness. You've got to wait until you feel the amos is kick in. No, because that's not going to work for you. But what you want to do is a timing thing. Okay, so it's when you feel as though your sight is going to be actually on the target. But don't stop on the target. Move through the target in a controlled way. Don't just whack the stick to the left as hard as I can and press fire. 
No, it's got to be in a more controlled way. As I said, the, the slower the movement, the more the aim assist is going to kick in. So it needs to be a controlled movement. Now, you might have heard the term twitch shot, you know, where you basically just move the sight a little bit. You just sort of twitch your thumb to the left or the right or up or down and press the trigger and hope that the aim assist is going to give you that shot. Now, the thing to remember is that the crit box for the head, that is actually favoured by aim assist. Aim assist favours the head hitbox rather than the body hitbox. So going for the body isn't always the right thing to do. If someone's further away, always go for the head because the aim assist is going to prefer the head and you need to exploit aim assist. You need to work with it. The aim assist wants to give you that headshot. He wants to. You've got to just go for it. Okay. <laughs> now if someone's really close to you and they're low on health, yes, take that body shot. But if they're further away, always go for that headshot. Okay, so you understand just what a hitbox is and why they're used in the first place. I'll do a quick explanation. Now, every guardian in the game has an overall hitbox. And there are also hitboxes for the different parts of the guardian. The legs, even the feet, the body, the head, the arms. Now, why a box? Well, the boxes are a simple shape that are easy to check against using code. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we take the crit box for the head, it's called the critical hit box because that gives you the most damage. It's the crit shot box. Now this box, like all the boxes have depth. They have a actual Z coordinate, X, Y, and Z coordinates to all their points that make up the box. So, this means that it's easy to check against the box. You can check to see whether a bullet is in front of the box. You can check to see whether it's behind the box, to the left of the box, to the right of the box, above the box or below the box. So you do these six checks. And if the answer to all those questions is no, then you know the bullet must be inside the box. Now this is an oversimplification of course, but it does illustrate why a simple cube primitive is used to check against. The line of motion of the sight through the hitbox of the target. That is crucial. Now obviously with practice, you can move the sight quicker. Now the quicker you move the sight, the more accurate you have to be. Because that means aim assist hasn't got as much time to kick in and help you. So the more aim assist you have, the better. The target acquisition mod, uh, that will give you a bit more aim assist. I think it's like 10 or 15, something like that. So that can help when you're starting out. But you need to practice a controlled movement, as I said before, to get that target through the hitbox. Now, sometimes you start your movement in the wrong direction and you have to course correct, which results in more of a curve to the line of motion. I call that a sweep shot and that is definitely more difficult to do but you can pull them off but of course having a controlled slower movement makes it easier to make those course corrections that's not ideal obviously because that means that you started moving in the wrong direction in the first place <laughs> when it comes to dueling uh, with another sniper you need to be quick you need to get your shot in first but that isn't going to help you if you miss so you have to be very controlled in your movement but still be quick so you need the speed and the accuracy and you need to be more accurate the faster you move the sight because that gives the aim assist less time to kick in. Again, this all comes with practice. As you get more confident with your lines of motion, you're more accurate, you can move quicker and still land your shot. Now when it comes to weapon mods, the best way to use them is to compensate for weaknesses in a weapon. So if the sniper has a low mag, you can have backup mag to give you a few more bullets. If you want to be able to jump snipe, then you can put on Icarus. Yeah, you don't always jump snipe a lot. It, it's something you do once in a while, but it's nice to have that option. And without Icarus, it would be very difficult to land any shots. If you're a warlock floating around, then Icarus is definitely a good weapon mod, but I wouldn't advise floating around, not unless you've got a dash mechanic to get you out of trouble. Sniping Warlocks out of the air is one of my favorite things to do. Also, don't forget to check the mods on your armor. 
Any mods that reduce flinch can be critical because flinch makes it very difficult to land your shots when you're sniping. And at the moment in Destiny, at the time of doing this video, flinch is really bad. So when you're sniping, it's One difficult minute. to land a shot when you're getting flinched, but you can do it. As I said, take your shot and get out of there. Now there is a sniper called the Revoker and that has a perk where it will actually give you your bullet back if you miss. And this is fantastic for learning to snipe because it encourages you to go for your shots. So rather than thinking, I've only got like three or four bullets, I've got to hit these shots, I can't waste these bullets. With a Revoker, if you completely miss, you get it back anyway. So it really encourages you just to go for it. Be more ambitious with your sniping. And you have to be, you have to be bold. You have to take that shot and get into cover. So the way you have to think about it is, I'm gonna break cover, I'm gonna take my shot, and then I'm gonna get back into cover. If I miss, I miss. If you have that attitude, I'm gonna go for that headshot, and you do that movement in a controlled way, and you make sure that your sight actually intersects with the line of motion of the head hitbox, and you pull the trigger, and try and get that timing down. Some days you'll you'll be on point doing these amazing snipes, and other days it won't be so good. You know, it won't work so well for you. It's kind of like if you've ever been golfing, it's like that. Like some days you can go golfing and you feel as though you can't miss. Pitching, you're putting, you know, you're driving is is perfect. You're hitting the sweet spot on the club. The ball's flying. Like you can't miss. Your swing is just so natural and it doesn't feel forced. And other days you can't hardly hit the ball. That's the way golf is. And sniping's a bit like that. So it comes down to that muscle memory and that practice. But once you've learned the dark art of sniping, once you've got that muscle memory and that timing, it's like riding a bike. You might have not sniped for a long time, but you get back into it really quickly. So some videos will say, if, to become a crack sniper, you need to practice ADSing so that when you ADS, the hitbox is really close to your sights. And they tell you to run around in the PVP area, maybe find something to shoot at, Maybe it may just be a mark on a texture, do lots of running around, sliding, 360 turns, and practice scoping in on that spot consistently. And that's good, that's a good discipline to do. To try and make sure that when you scope in, you're already at head height. And then you can just do a quick left or right motion, a twitch shot, and that's probably the easiest way to snipe, is to practice those scoping in and doing those twitch shots trying to exploit that aim assist you're trying to kick in that magnetism and making sure those lines of motion intersect and, and i've done like 360 motion and just pulled the trigger and got headshots you can get some just amazingly crazy shots you'll be surprising yourself once you learn that how to exploit the aim assist now another thing to remember is that aim assist prioritizes targets that are close to you Maybe you've been in PvP and you've gone to shoot someone in the distance and someone jumps in front of you, closer to you, and drags your sights off a target and you miss your shot. And that can be annoying. Oh, aim assist. Oh. But actually, aim assist, without it, you really wouldn't be able to hit hardly anything. Now, if someone's jumping in the air, their motion is predictable. You know they're going to fall a certain way in a sort of straight down or in an arc of some kind. So if you move the sight in that line of motion, so you can say, oh, they're going to fall down here. So this warlock is floating down and you know that their head's going to pass through a certain point. Now, a horizontal or a vertical movement is easier to control. But yeah, diagonal movements are a bit harder to do to try and keep that diagonal line. So if you're moving diagonally to intersect with the motion of the hitbox of your opponent, that's a bit more tricky. But yeah, gradually your hit rate will start improving and you'll be landing more and more shots. And once you get good at it, it's so rewarding. Like you can stop people mid super. I can't tell you the number of times I've sniped golden guns, uh, storm callers. I think storm callers are probably easier to deal with because they tend to glide around on the floor. So you know they're gonna appear, say in a certain doorway so you can have your sights ready and and then just make, make that horizontal adjustment as soon as they appear move your sight to the left or the right wherever they appear and press that fire button at the right time 
bam, they're done. And you know they're going to be raging. <laughs> so when people do their supers, they think, oh, here I go. I'm going to kill loads of enemies now. And you just bam, deal with them. They're dead, done with. Okay, so if we look at the reticle or sight markings for this hand cannon, the circle, now that represents the diameter of the target acquisition or aim assist cone. We see the four little dashes represents the diameter of another cone, bullet accuracy. Now, I'm not gonna to get too much into this because it's a whole nother video, really, how these different cones behave. But basically, if you fire the weapon fast, if you keep firing it, it becomes less accurate. I.e. the bullet accuracy cone flares out and the target acquisition cone shrinks. So it makes your weapon more inaccurate. This is where ghost bullets come in because if you keep firing the weapon fast, the bullet accuracy flares out and you're more likely to miss. Your, your bullets are more likely to go off target. But yeah, with a sniper, you don't have to worry about this too much. As I said, it's a whole other video talking about these sight markings, these reticules and what they represent and how they behave for different weapons. But I just wanted to show you these markings so you know that I'm not making this up. Like, these cones do actually exist. They have a diameter, they have a length, and yes, these are real things that are coded into the game. They do exist in the game logic. Okay, another thing I wanted to talk about is scopes. Getting a low zoom scope is really important for sniping aggressively. If you want to hang back with a sniper, then a high zoom scope is okay. But if you want to get more aggressive and get in people's faces with a sniper, then a low zoom scope is really important. It gives you a wider field of view when you're ADSing, so that you can track targets more easily. Now with a sniper, you don't have to worry about range. The range stat, you can literally ignore that. The cruisable maps are only small, so it really isn't a, an issue. Stability isn't really an issue either. As I said, you know, with other weapons, it, it can be an issue. You really want your cone of inaccuracy, your, <laughs> your bullet damage cone to uh, rectify itself quickly. But with a sniper, it's not an issue. So do not worry about stability on a sniper. What you want is high handling, so that even if someone's in your face, you can quickly adjust your aim and still track them, even if they're jumping, even if they're sliding. With a, a good handling on the sniper, you can still track them and move the sight through them, uh, through their hitbox easily. A reload on the sniper is important. A reload on any weapon is important because it can really save your bacon in a tight spot it can keep you in the action, it can allow you to maintain pressure. Ideally, you just want to take your shot, get into cover, and hopefully you'll have time to reload if you need to. But sometimes you just don't have the time, and that's when a fast reload can really save you. Now, I've spoken a lot about target acquisition, and obviously that's a huge factor to sniping like an ace. But it's not the be and end all. Being a, a sniper, a crack sniper, isn't just about being able to land your shots. It's also about your movement. And it's also about your awareness, like knowing the maps, knowing that you've got cover on your flanks, knowing when you're exposed on your flanks and having a timer in your mind, knowing that, okay, I'm in this, in this position trying to get this person, I'm, I'm ADSing, but I've been ADSing for too long. That little, that little alarm should go off in your mind. I've been ADSing for too long. I did know where they were, but the guy on my left is probably flanking me. He knows I'm sniping. He's trying to get a flank on me, thinking I'm gonna aim down sights. So I'm not gonna be aware. So that little, when that little timer goes off in your mind, it's like, okay, I need to scope back out again now. I need to check the radar. I need to think someone could be on me now. I need to get, that position of awareness back. So this is why you need a snapshot because it allows you to zoom in quickly and also zoom out quickly to get a, f a feel for where the enemy are. So you know situationally if you're in danger, if you need to relocate, you know, retrack where people are. Now you may have heard the term no scope. So basically that just means if someone is rushing you, like if a shotgun is sliding and rushing you, it gets in your face, Sometimes you can get caught out. You know, maybe use ADS in a little too long. 
you lost track of where people were, you weren't paying attention to that timer in your head, and you got closed down. And someone's in your face, and you're like, oh, what, do I, what do you do? Like, you haven't got time to swap to your primary weapon. They're right in your face. You can just put the, your sight on them and just hit the fire button and hope you'll get a body shot. So basically, you're hip firing your sniper. This isn't ideal. Obviously, you don't want to be in that situation, but it can save your bacon. Sometimes you can get a body shot and then finish them off with a melee or a throwing knife or a grenade. I personally like to quick scope people. So that basically means if they rush you, just quickly ADS with your snapshot and then take the shot. Now, if you ADS and you're a bit out, maybe your reticule, your markings aren't quite on the enemy, then you quickly move the scope in one motion, basically you ADS and move the scope in the direction you feel you need to move it and press the trigger. So that's a quick scope. Uh, and that can give, often give you a body shot. Sometimes you can even give you a headshot if you're lucky. And then, as I said, finish them off with a throwing knife or a melee or if they're back off, a grenade. Okay, so if we slow this action down, this shot down, and take it frame by frame, each frame represents a 30th of a second. So you can see how quickly all this happens, how quickly you have to make these adjustments. So there's a lot going on. It's just like driving a car. There's a lot going on, but once you sort of learn each component, get your ADS in, you get your, your scope movement down, you get the timing down, all, it all comes together, just like driving a car. It all becomes second nature, and you start doing it even without thinking. Now let's have a look at some of my favorite snipers. Now, the Revoker absolutely dominated in Crucible, and people are still using it now, even though it's level capped at the moment, because of that reversal or fortune perk. It was so liberating for snipers, because it was almost like a money back guarantee. You know, if you miss your shot, don't worry, we'll give you your bullet back. And this encourages you to go to crazy shots. And of course it's high impact as well. So you can shut down supers. People tend to want that from a sniper for obvious reasons. Handling isn't great. That's the only thing about it. I mean, it's okay. Reload speed, okay. But the range is massive. That is a complete waste of a stat. You don't want range on a sniper. You don't need it because the, the range on snipers is way more than you need anyway. Even so, this sniper completely dominated in Crucible because of that reversal of Fortune perk. Okay, another sniper I really like is this LR2. It's a blue sniper. It is level capped, but in normal PvP, that isn't a problem. What I love about it is it has a low zoom scope or short zoom scope, the ambush scope, the SLH25. And again, that gives you a wide field of view. So even if someone's in your face, you can still track them quite well. The handling is good. Well, it's better than good. It's de very decent. Uh, the impact is reasonable as well. The range stat is low, but as I said before, that does not matter. Uh, the reload speed is okay as well. You get four bullets in the mag. So even though it's a blue sniper, I really love this sniper. And it's got snapshot, of course. It's got to have snapshot. Now this is one of my favorite snipers of all time. This is Alone as a God. It's got a great name for a sniper. Now you shouldn't play as a lone wolf. You should obviously play as a team player, but I still love that name, Alone as a God. It's a cool looking weapon, but of course it's got that all important snapshot. It had a good low zoom scope on it as well, uh, but look at that handling stat. That handling stat is insane. That's why I love this weapon so much and the reload speed as well. It reloads so quickly. Like, okay, the price you pay is it hasn't got a lot of impact. It's a low impact sniper, so you can't snipe people out of their supers, but that handling, oh, it makes it so good to use up aggressively. Like if I've got the alone as a god sniper, even if someone's in my face, I still feel as though I've got a good chance of getting them because that handling speed is so good. Even if someone's in your face, you can track them. You can make those fine adjustments fast. Even if they're sliding and jumping, they're moving quickly. That handling is so good that you can make really good movements. And that line of motion 
to intersect that head box, you can just get that much easier with that high handling stat. Even today, I still love using this sniper. My most insane sniping shots I've got with this sniper because of that high handling stat. So it's not all about high impact snipers. You can have a lot of fun with a sniper that's got high handling. And again, it's got a low range stat, really doesn't matter. You're not gonna notice the difference. One minute. A very popular sniper in this. PVP at the moment is the Adored Sniper. It has an aim assist of 68, that's very respectable. And if you put a target adjuster on that, it's gonna bump it up even more. It's not as high as alone as a God, which has an aim assist of 79, which is just insane, but it's up there. And it has a zoom of 45, the same as the alone as a God. So it is a low zoom scope as well. And you can get snapshot on it as well. <laughs> that's one of the reasons I use it. Okay, let's take a look at this slow motion one more time. And if you notice at the end of the motion, as the sights come close to the hitbox of the enemy, you get that slight slowdown. That's the aim assist kicking in. And it really isn't about feel for me. I mean, I suppose that probably does come into it a little bit. It is more about timing, when to pull the trigger, it's not even about timing really. I mean, to be honest, it's just a matter of you move the scope, you pull the trigger. You know, move the scope, pull the trigger, move the scope, pull the trigger, and I hope that aim assist kicks in for you and gives you the shot. It's just practice. Keep trying over and over again, and eventually it will click for you. Now, when you first start doing this, you are going to die a lot. Be prepared for that. Your KD is going to take a battering. Your KD is going to be on life support. <laughs> uh, but perseverance will reward you, so don't give up. Think of it as a learning experience. It's going to take time, but if you persevere, you will be rewarded. Okay, so we've covered a lot in this video. If you've got this far, well done. You're obviously determined, and I'm sure you're really gonna do well as a sniper. I hope you found this video informative, and I've really steered you in the right direction, and given you a good idea what it is that you're actually trying to do, and demystified a lot of what's going on. Okay, thanks for watching the video. Good luck. Obviously, if you've enjoyed the video, a subscribe would be brilliant. A thumbs up would be brilliant. That would really help me out. Again, thanks for watching. And hopefully, I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye for now. No lives left for your enemy. Destroy them. You wage war like a true titan. One enemy left. One minute left. The enemy is out of second chances. Enemies down. All lives expended. Total victory! I demanded survival, and oh, how you survived. Excellent.